Welcome to Electron Online. Now that we've talked about electromagnetic radiation and the fact that that is quantized in little chunks called photons, and then we've looked and see how electrons can interplay within the energy levels of an atom by absorbing or giving off these photons, these electrons which are quantized, we're now going to take a more careful look at what we call the hydrogen atom or the Bohr atom. Bohr is Named, uh, the Bohr atom is named after Niels Bohr, who was a very famous physicist who came up with the quantization levels of energy around the Bohr atom, who's, who envisioned that and who drew this plan out. And of course, he did have a lot of help from other scientists. And so what we discovered was that when electrons were able to jump up and down from one level in a, in a hydrogen atom to another level, they would either absorb or give off energy. When electrons jump from higher levels down to lower levels, they would give off a photon equal to the exact energy difference between those levels. And if an, if an electron received a photon with that exact energy difference between any two levels, the electron would then absorb that energy, take it, and move up to higher orbits like that. If a photon came along that had not the exact amount of energy, for example, if an electron was in the innermost level, and it, didn't ha it, ha it had not enough to make it to the next level, the electron would simply ignore it. It had so much to make it to the next level and beyond, but not quite to the next level beyond that, maybe only one and a half levels. Again, the electron would simply ignore that energy because it could not use it. It had to be the exact amount of energy needed to jump to another level. So how do we find the energy required for those jumps? Well, it turned out that the innermost energy level has a potential energy of minus 13.6 electron volts. In other words, if an electron resides in the innermost energy level of a hydrogen atom, to get it completely taken away from the atom, you need to give it enough energy to overcome that energy difference between the first level and the many levels beyond that. And that energy is 13.6 electron volts. So what kind of photon has energy of 13.6 electron volts? Well, we have the equation where the energy is equal to h times the frequency, which is equal to h times c over lambda. And we usually can recognize it by the wavelength. So let's solve this for lambda. Lambda is equal to hc divided by the energy. So we'll plug in Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules. Multiply times the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And now divided by the amount of energy, 13.6 electron volts. Now, electron volts is not a standard unit. We have to convert that to joules. And the conversion from electron volts to joules is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per electron volt. So that allows us to find the wavelength in meters. So let's take a look and see what that is. That is 6.626 e to the 34 minus times 3 e to the 8, divided by 13.6, and divided by 1.6 e to the 19 minus equals, and that is a wavelength of 91.4 nanometers. So this is equal to 91.4 nanometers, or 91.4 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So what kind of photon is that? Well, remember that visible light is between 400 to 700 nanometers. So this is a wavelength that's shorter than visible light. That means it now puts it into the ultraviolet radiation band. So sure enough, in, if you want to go ahead and take an electron from the innermost energy level and completely free it, in other words, ionize hydrogen, you need to have a photon of at least that much energy or that wavelength in order to get it away from the atom. And that would be a ultraviolet radiation photon. Anything Less, with less energy than that, the electron could not jump away from the, from the proton, could, the, the atom could not be ionized, and so all it could do is maybe get it into a higher level. Likewise, when the electron goes from way out in space and then jumps all the way down to the innermost energy level, then a photon of exactly 13.6 electron volts will be emanated, and that would be a ultraviolet photon. So, the first person that discovered the relationship between the jumps to the innermost level and back out was Lyman. So that series of jumps is called the Lyman series. The person who figured out the energy difference for the, the jumps down to the second level was Balmer, and we call that the Balmer series. And then the person who figured out the energy drops down to the third energy level and back was Paskin, so we call that the Paskin series. So we have these 
contributions from various scientists who figured out how the electrons move up and down from energy levels in the hydrogen atom. So what we're going to do is do maybe one more, trying to figure out what kind of photon would be emanated from a jump where an electron jumps from the n equals 3 level down to the n equals 2 level in a hydrogen atom. So what would be the energy difference between that? Well, it turns out the energy, the energy of the second level is equal to minus 3.4 electron volts, and the energy of the third level is minus 1.51 electron volts. It's actually minus 1.51111. It goes on forever. Um, so we need to find out the difference between the two levels. Now, how do we know that? How do we figure that out? Well, it turns out that energy of any level in a hydrogen atom is minus 13.6 electron volts, which is the energy of the most innermost orbit divided by the energy level squared. So for the second level, it's minus 13.6 divided by 2 squared. For the third level, it's minus 13.6 divided by 3 squared, and so forth. And that's how you come up with these numbers. So now, if we want to know the energy released by this jump right here, let's try to figure that out. So we have the energy released from the n equals 3 down to the n equals 2 level. How much is that? Well, first of all, we're going to come up with the difference in the energy. So the delta energy is equal to the energy of the innermost level, which is 3.4 electron, oh, not the second level, not the innermost, minus the energy of the third level, electron volts. And uh, let's see here, that would be uh, 2, that would be 1.8989 electron volts. It's actually 1.889 electron volts if you want to go one more significant figure. All right, now, can we figure out the wavelength of the photon generated by this jump? Yes, we can by using this equation right here. So the wavelength is equal to hc over the energy, which is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. That would be joules times seconds. Speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, divided by the energy in electron volts, which is 1.889 electron volts, and then the conversion, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 9 joules per electron volt. Notice the electron volts cancel out, the joules cancel out, the per second cancel out, and we're left simply with meters. So we have 6.626e to the 34 minus times 3e to the 8 divided by 1.889 and divided by 1.6e to the 19 minus. And I get 657.7 nanometers or times 10 to the minus 9 meters. Now that's not the exact number. It's actually more like 656.3 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. I know that that's the exact number. Why am I slightly different? Because I use not the exact numbers here for the speed of light and the conversion from joules to electron volt, but close enough for our purpose. So that's how we find the wavelength of the photon that was either absorbed or emitted when an electron jumps from one orbit to another. So likewise, if this electron wants to jump from the second level to the third level, it needs to absorb a photon with this exact wavelength that exact energy. Now, just to finish off, what kind of photon is that? What kind of photon has a wavelength of about 657 nanometers? Well, notice that visible light has a range from 400 to 700 nanometers. When you get close to 700 nanometers, you have red light. So this is a photon of red light. And you only need one, just one, for the electron to jump from this level to that level, and when the electron falls back from the third level down to the second level, it will emanate a photon of that exact wavelength and that exact frequency. And that's how you look at the hydrogen atom in the quantum state for the electron.